We're going to start out in the celebration hymns, in the celebration hymns, number 55, number 55, in the celebration hymns, bless his holy name. Let's all stand as we sing number 55. seniors in the fellowship hall. Each senior will have a table setting and a place to put cards and gifts. Please bring finger foods. Come and honor the following students. Tara Ring, Tara Riddle, <laughs> Tara Riddle, Paula Potter, Aiden, Kessler, Logan Pryor, Carson, Wilbur. Uh, June the 26th, Sunday at 10 is Father's Day with each. Okay. 21st, Sunday at 10, Father's Day with each father receiving a gift. There will be no evening service. A special prayer, remember Martin Schrader, uh, who's improving. Wendell McCormick, who had surgery this past Friday. We collected $3,121.24 in a special offering for Brother Keith Allison last Sunday. Amen. So we praise God uh, for that. Amen. And continue to pray for he and, and all the others that have been meetings have been canceled. There's been a lot of folks uh, and others uh, need to continue to pray for them. Pray for our seniors and those still not able to be with us for the next few weeks. Uh, continue to look at the prayer list and pray for those that need prayer. Um, any other announcement that we need to make at this time? Yeah, Brother Chuck, uh, terribly sorry, but when they asked me to name a senior, Miss Kelly Arnold didn't get put on there because I forgot to say her name. We actually have six. Okay. Kelly Arnold. All right. Anything else? If not, then we'll continue to sing in that same book, number 521, A New Name in Glory, number 521.
four. Without him, maybe five over two.
just say thank God I know him. Yeah. I, I just had to go pray for him because I know him. <laughs> but it ain't because of me. God right. rejected me. I'd have turned me away. Right. But exactly. God looked down and said, I want to love him. He chose to know me and love me and let me know him. I'm only saved on my way to heaven because God loves me, not because of anything Amen. I ever did. I wouldn't have forgiven me for anything That's I ever did. Exactly right. But he still picked me up yep. and loved me and wanted that relationship yes. with me. Yep. And I can't even think of how I would possibly get through anything in that if I didn't know him. Because I've done tried that life. It didn't work. It, it, I, I, I would have a, yeah, yeah, yeah. a life full of enemies and disgust and misery all if I didn't know him. Because the only way I can man. even forgive and move on to the next day or want to do more is because I know him. Yep. I got a standard that I can look at and say, this is God. This is what he says. That's the beginning point of life. I can look at his word and say, right here is what I base it all off of. Amen. That's what he told me. Amen. But if I didn't have that, I'd just be lost. I wouldn't have any idea how to live. And this whole life would be nothing but misery waiting my turn to die. But because I know him and he knows me, I can live right now. Even if, no matter how bad it gets, I can have something to smile about and live every day. I hold back and don't pray. I'm going to praise him on the worst day possible or the best because he knows me and I know him. Thank you for saying that. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? We've kind of got a little, you know, system we go through, but we don't have to stay on that. No, you know? We can try to kind of be organized no, a little bit, but we'd like the Lord to take charge. So if there's something on your heart, let's go right ahead. Yes. Number 329. We'll sing the first verse in the, in the chorus. Let's all stand as we sing. <laughs>
Hey, Logan, why don't you stand and tell the church what the young people did yesterday? Uh, yesterday, we made songs and we stood around the courthouse and it sounds like a secure your eternity, turn to God, calm for Jesus. That Amen. Kind of stuff. And we got a lot of positive reactions. Um, the cops joked to us about, uh, what are you protesting? <laughs> oh. but, uh, nothing happened, like trouble, but I think we reached a bunch of people and it was a good day. Yeah, I think there's about 10 of them out there holding up all, all the signs. Uh, one of the signs said, uh, let's see, eternal lives matter. I thought that was pretty good. Proud of y'all. They got some people that pointed them to the way home to heaven. Not really good, though. And uh, not everybody's going to like when you do something for the Lord. But God sure does. Yeah. If nobody else does, not God sure does. It's good to see some new faces this morning. We ain't seen in a while. And glad you're here. Uh, missed y'all. Thank God for y'all being back. And uh, hope the Lord blesses. I need two of the ushers to come forward this morning. We're so glad to give back to God. It's just a portion of what he gave to us. Man. If you got, let me, let me get tell you something. If you got no, nothing monetarily to give him this week, God knows. But what you can give him is praise. Amen. You can give him worship. So just enjoy him today. Um, brother, go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, thank you for coming to the house of the Lord. We thank you for the sunshine of us. Yes, we do. <laughs>
longer than you thought it was before. Turn around, you've gone far enough. There's still room for you to come and stay with us. Kill the fatty cat. on this morning give an update on Mrs. Patsy's daddy he's improved a little bit uh, they took off the ventilator and you still ain't got to see him have you? I did get to see him before they took him off the ventilator oh really? for 20 minutes but I can't go back they said oh uh, 
Oh, thank God for 20 minutes. Well, the window had surgery Friday. I've called him four times. I haven't got him. So I can't give you an update on him. Uh, continue praying. Can I tell you this? God's good. Well, Amen. Pastor, can I tell you that I love you this morning? Yes, you can. I want to tell you that I love you this morning. <laughs> Kelly sung that song about father. You know, hey, he, he not only stood yeah. out on the road, but it's the only time in the Bible where it says the father ran. It's the only picture in the Bible where the father runs. It's where he sees his child coming home. Amen. 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 She sung about that prodigal son. She actually sung about the prodigal father. Yeah. yeah. Prodigal means you spend lavishly. <laughs> yeah. He is the prodigal father. Yeah. Amen. Man, he got good. Yeah. Turn your Bibles. Second Kings chapter 21. You missed Sunday school this morning. Go home and watch it. it it'll be on, it'll be posted on the live stream page, on the Facebook page. Uh, Brother Tommy's lesson, the teenagers on today. Have theirs out there. There'll be another class starting back. I think Miss Janie's going to start her class next week. And uh, next week the youth will be, young people, you all need to be finding out whose class is and whose class is. Because uh, I, I done told Brother Tommy to go pick out somebody and um, call and find out. I know that Miss Janie's class will be there. I also know that Brother Tommy's class. I also know the young people. And, uh, you know, we'll do whatever need to be done. But, young people, y'all got your part next week. So here's what I tell y'all to do. Since y'all want to be in leadership next week, learn to have your heart right before you get here for leadership. It's not just about teaching. It's about also having your heart in the right place to teach. Most teachers and preachers will tell you there's more time in getting our heart right than he is in studying. Well, if he is wicked as me, anyway. Well. Anyway, I'd like to preach on this morning with this thought. It's not too late. Amen. You could still turn to God. We're going to be talking about Manasseh this week. Now, Manasseh kind of goes along with the Sunday school this morning. He's the son of... Of who, Brother Tom? Hezekiah. Hezekiah. Manasseh was 12 years old when his daddy died, and he took over being the king of Judah. At this time, Judah and Israel is separated. 12 nation, 12 tribes uh, formed Israel. Two tribes formed Judah. Israel now is done taken into captivity, but Judah is still trying to serve the Lord. And Hezekiah, Manasseh had a daddy like Hezekiah, which was a godly man. Now can I say this? Not just a godly man, but a very godly man. Hezekiah had two things about him. Both of them was actually mentioned this morning in Sunday school that in the whole Bible of, of Hezekiah's reign that stood out about Hezekiah, he loved going to the house of God. And he loved praying to the Lord. Man, wouldn't you like to have a testimony like that? So Manasseh was raised in a godly home got to watch his daddy meet with God, got to go to the house of God with his daddy, got to watch his daddy pray like no other man prayed, got to watch God then turn around and hear his daddy's prayers, 
do things for his daddy that he's never done for nobody else before, turned the earth backwards to prove, to show Hezekiah, because he prayed that he was going to give him 15 more years. There's not nobody else in the Bible that God did that for. Amen. And Manasseh got to watch that. Manasseh got to watch the whole uh, Judah just come right back in the full-fledged revival and worship of the Lord again. His daddy tore down the groves and tore down the false idol worship places and, and all that burned, uh, gathered up all the false little gods everywhere and gathered them together and burned them or broke them up, whichever they needed. And then his daddy got all of Judah to serve God again. Manasseh got to watch that. But Manasseh still got to make up his own mind. And so then we start in verse 1 of 2 Kings chapter 21. Well, I wish y'all would have your Bibles out. All of y'all that's in your living rooms this morning watching from your home, you need to get your Bible out. Because it's not what comes from this. It's what comes from this. It's what's going to matter. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began the reign and reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hephzaba. <laughs> and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. There, there's no way. I mean, the raisin that he had, and then he's going to come up evil? No, no, that ain't the way it's supposed to happen. After the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed. And he reared up the altars of Baal and made a grove. There goes the sexual sin in that one word Amen. right there. Yep. As did Ahab king of Israel and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served them. And he built altars in the house of the <clears throat> Lord. He built altars to the little G gods in God's house. Yeah. Which, the, which the Lord said, in Jerusalem will I put my name. He built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. He made his sons to pass through the fire. Uh, he sacrificed yeah. his own kids yeah. to other little g-gods. He observed the times and used enchantments <coughs> and dwelt with familiar spirits and with wizards. I mean, he went to witches and wizards. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. And he set a graven image of uh, image of the grove that he had made in the house of which the Lord said to David and to Solomon's son, his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I make the feet of Israel move any more out of the land which I gave their fathers only if they will observe and do according to all that I have commanded them and, and according to all the law that my servant Moses commanded them, but they hearken not and Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than did the nations whom the Lord destroyed before the children of Israel. Yeah. <coughs> How can one kid <coughs> go so bad from such a godly home? We all got to make our own mind. And the Lord spake by his servant. So God sent a prophet saying, Because Manasseh, king of Judah, hath done these abominations, and hath done wickedly above all that the Amorites did, which were before him, and hath made Judah also to sin with his idols. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I am bringing such evil upon Jerusalem and Judah, that whatsoever heareth it, both his ears shall tingle. God's fixing to judge Manasseh and Judah so bad 
that when people just hear of the judgment of God, it's going to make their ears tingle. God's done God upset. I will stretch out over Jerusalem the line of Samaria and the, and the plummet of the house of Ahab, and I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wipeth the ditch, wiping it and turneth in it upside down. I will forsake the remnant of mine inheritance and will deliver them into the hand of their enemies and they shall become a prey and a spoil to all their enemies because they have done that which was evil in the sight and have provoked me to anger since the day of their fathers came forth out of Egypt even unto this day. Here's Manasseh got this warning, got the judgment pronounced upon him and Judah and this is what Manasseh did. You'd think he would say, oops, I'm sorry, but this is what Manasseh did, verse 16. Moreover, Manasseh shed innocent blood very much till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to the other beside his sin wherewith he had made Judah to sin and doing that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Verse 17, now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and all that he did uh, and his sin, that he sinned, are they not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And then look at the last scripture in 2 Kings. And Manasseh slept with his fathers and was buried in the garden of his own house, in the garden of Uzzah. And Ammon, his son, reigned in his stead. What a sad life <coughs> to come up under of uh, the house of a godly mama and daddy to watch God move in his own personal family's lives to watch God do things that he never done for another king to watch his daddy pray and weep before God to watch his daddy go to church and not just go to church but get in while he's there not only get in with God but get in with the people uh, he just didn't sit back and just come to church as his duty. But he come, Hezekiah, come to meet with God. He no. come to talk with God. Yeah. He come to brag on yeah. God. He come to worship God. And then he come to leave different than when he went in. Sure. And Manasseh got to watch all that. And then for the M M Manasseh to do all that. And 2 Kings looks like that the story of Manasseh's life has ended, and there was no part of God in his life. But the problem is, is there is another story. Amen. Uh, God just didn't tell all of Manasseh's life in 2 Kings, but in 2 Chronicles that he mentioned uh, in the book of, I mean, in the chapter 17, if you'll turn in your Bibles to 2 Chronicles chapter 33. Good to hear pages turn. Use your Bibles. Second Chronicles, chapter thirty-three. It's just two books further. First Chronicles, then Second Chronicles. Then get to find verse thirty-three. I want you to. We'll start with <coughs> verse one. I'm not going to read it all. It's almost identical to Second Chronicles, chapter twenty-one. We read from verses 1 to 9, Manasseh's sin. Can I tell you the real sin was? He didn't know God. A man that don't know God will get into things uh, that they shouldn't be in. A person that even has been saved but has uh, let herself go a little bit from walking with God and knowing God hearing his voice uh, they'll even get into things that they had not and should not get into and, I, and, and so we see in Manasseh uh, chapter 33 uh, 1 all the way down to 10 it's the exact same story of Manasseh's sin and what he done and how wicked he was 
He, besides Ahab, he was probably the second worst king in Israel to make, uh, in Judah, to make Judah fall into sin and to do things that's highly wicked against God and embarrass God and, and, uh, and just done things that would just uh, make God's stomach turn. And he goes through it all again. And then you see in verse 11, that what God proclaimed, how the judgment's going to fall, came to pass. Can I tell you what God says is true? Yeah. Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns. Here he is, is a king that went from the palace that is literally hiding in thorns and thistles and thickets to try to not get caught and they've caught him in the thorns and then they and then bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon. I want you to notice verse 12 and verse 13. And when he was in affliction, there's four things he did. God told him, Manasseh, you haven't been living right, you haven't been doing right. It's broken my heart. It's destroyed me, and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna send judgment into your home, into your house, and upon you, and upon Judah. And because of your sin, Judah's also gonna pay for it. And I'm gonna haul you off, and uh, you're gonna become a slave. He was already a slave to sin. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He was already in fetters, sin, self, which took Manasseh among the thorns and bound him with fetters and carried him into Babylon, verse 12. And when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God. He humbled himself greatly, four things here, before the God of his fathers. Prayed unto him. Wonder, Brother Tommy, how he learned to pray. Maybe watching his daddy. And prayed unto him. He wasn't treated of him. How can I tell you, for a little while, Manasseh finally saw something that God did with his fathers that he was lacking in his own life. And even though Manasseh deserved to go to hell, uh, even though Manasseh deserved to be in captivity, even though he deserved the thorns and thistles of life for his sin and for what he got caught up in, even though he needed to be uh, just beat up by, by the things that man could throw on him for what he was doing to the innocent men, He separated himself, got by himself, and sought after God. Yeah. And now you would think, and I would think, that God would say, no, you justly deserve it. Uh, you're going to go just like uh, your life was planned out for you because you planned it. Uh, you, now you get to earn uh, what you sowed. And so now you can cry out all you want. Uh, but I'm going to give my blessings to another. I'm going to let you wind up in captivity till you're dead. And then I'm going to let you go to hell. You'd think that's what God would say. The second worst king that caused the whole land of Judah to go a whoring after other gods. You would think that's what God would say. But can I tell you this? Oh, we got a God that's full of long suffering. Uh, we got a God that's full of mercy. Uh, we got a God that's full of grace. Uh, we got a God that is searching out. He's going to and fro in the earth to try to find somebody that's calling out to him with a pure heart. He's not looking for a righteous man to call out. He's looking for a sinner to call out to him. Yes. Can I tell you, God didn't send uh, His Son for the worst of us, but He sent His Son for all of us. We was all in sin. Amen. I want 
you to notice the response of God in verse 12. The Bible says, He besought the Lord as God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. And in verse 13, and prayed unto him. And he is the God there was entreated of him and heard his supplication. God heard Manasseh's prayer. God hears your prayer. If we was to humble ourselves, if we was to turn from our wicked ways, if we was to repent, call upon God, the Bible said He would hear from on high. And the Bible says here that He heard Manasseh's prayer. Amen. I wouldn't have. You wouldn't have. If he'd have killed my innocent boy in that city, I sure wouldn't have heard his prayer. If he'd have called for my family that I served God to leave and go after all the rest of these little G gods that means nothing, I'd be so mad at him, I wouldn't hear his prayer. But God says, Manasseh's praying. Yeah. Let me bend an ear toward him and hear his prayer. He listened to every word that he prayed. And then the Bible says he heard his supplication. And then get this. And brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. The Bible says that Jerusalem is the place that God dwelt. Jerusalem is the place where God said that I will dwell there. I will place my name there. God said, I'm going to bring you back in to where I'm at. Yeah. I'm going to bring you back in you. to where I put my name at. Yeah. yeah, I know your sin. I know how filthy you are. I know how dirty you are, but I'm the only one that can clean you yeah. up. Yeah. I'm the only one that can help yeah. you. And if you're going to get any help to me, uh, you got to come back to me. I got, and you can't even do that on your own. Yeah. I'm going to bring you yeah. back to me. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. God brought him back into Jerusalem. I wonder how Manasseh felt coming back into the place where God dwelt. I wonder as he could see Jerusalem and in his sights as he talked the mountain. Oh, yeah. I'm walking back or maybe riding a donkey. Oh, I'm hey, maybe boy, did. Uh, he didn't come, come so proud this time. He didn't come so high and mighty. Yeah. I wonder if he looked and said, man, I'm getting my way back home. I wonder how that prodigal son felt that she sung about that was coming from a long way off. Uh, knowing his sin, uh, knowing his shame that he brought on his daddy, uh, knowing that he spent up all his daddy's goods and all his daddy's blessings. I wonder if why he was a walking along. And he said, and he got there and he stopped and he said, when I go over this mountain, when I go over this little knoll, I'm going to get to see home. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if Daddy's going to want me back. I wonder if Dad will even care. I wonder if he'll even recognize me. I, should I cross this snow? I'm too scared to say Daddy he probably won't even care. And he walks up and he kind of peers over. Daddy's standing in the road. Yes. <laughs> and looking like this. Hallelujah. Maybe today. Well, my son will come home. Man, I wonder how Manasseh felt. God done met with him in, in Babylon and done heard his prayer and talked to him. Yes. But man, walking back up in Jerusalem and seeing him from a distance, and he's he probably done changed. Now, I'm not worthy to walk into the presence of God. <clears throat> I'm not worthy to walk in and still be where his name resides. Amen. I wonder how much uh, he's changed a little bit. Amen. <sighs> Maybe y'all ain't never walked away from God like I have. Man, I hope you have. Because... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> He's fighting. Yeah. Boy, I'm glad. Yeah. He, 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 
come searching me out and, and then he brought me back. Yes. yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And then I want you to notice the last line of verse 13. Man, must have y'all, must have y'all, must have been pretty good and you needed to be, and God deserved to save you. But I didn't deserve no, it. Didn't. <laughs> Man, I didn't serve my daddy's God. I didn't walk in the ways my daddy always dreamed. I've watched my daddy pray. I've watched the tears fall from his face. I felt his tears fall on the back of my neck when I used to crawl underneath him when he used to pray. And I ain't never walked, I ain't walked like my daddy walked. But I remember, boy, God whooping me and hanging me out over hell. I remember God coming fighting yes. me. I remember God calling me and whooping me to his side. I remember when Jesus bled and died in my place. I remember I deserved hell. I remember that. Yeah. He shouldn't have saved me. He shouldn't have come after me, but he did. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> boy, he did. And oh, Manasseh, boy, this is what Manasseh said. Oh, when he come back into Jerusalem, he said, then Manasseh knew that the Lord he was God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. No doubt. Well, how are you? Man, the Lord, thank you, Jesus. Man, I, I, I watched my daddy. I worship God. I come home from school and, and watched my mama. I'm just by herself, nobody in the house. She didn't know we were so good. She's in another world in the living room with her hands raised up to God. I've heard her say, Jesus, Jesus, how sweet it is. Whew, just to breathe your name. I remember her saying that. I remember watching my daddy uh, lead and sing, and he's done it in every church we've been a part of, and it wasn't, we ain't been there too long, and they make him sing, lead the singing. And him getting in the middle of song and have a time with God right in the middle of it. And him and God in their own little sphere of, of the closeness that they had. God removed him out of this world for a while. And God left heaven for just a while. And for a little bit, for two or three or five minutes, God. And my daddy was a dancing together uh, on the stage of the church. And, and I mean having a time with God. I've watched it over and over again. But I didn't know God was God. And I remember that day I got up off my pew. And I come down in my sin and in my mess. In my just being an enemy against God. And I remember bowing a knee. And God washing me clean. And for the first time, I didn't know God as daddy's God. I didn't know God as my mama's God. I knew God as my God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. For the first time, I knew his touch. For the first time, I knew his cleanness. For the first time, I knew his holiness. Yeah. For the first time, I knew his greatness. Uh, for the first time, I knew his forgiveness. Uh, for the first time, I knew the peace yes, of God that passes all understanding. Yes. And I knew him as my God. Amen. I should have went to hell. I can't go to hell even if I want to. I'm sealed. That's right. I'm yes. washed in his blood. Amen. I'm kept by the power of God. No. I'm telling you, I am forever been changed. But then I want you to notice the change of Manasseh. Can I tell you this? You know why we get in a lot of problems like we get into? Is this it's either we don't know God or we have forgotten what we knew of God. Yeah. 
It's true. Can I tell you? Get back to God. It's not too late. I want you to notice Manasseh's change and then we'll be done. The Bible said in verse 14, Second Kings didn't even tell this story. Nowhere in Second Kings do you see Manasseh got right. Second Chronicles, God recorded it all down. Yeah. Amen. And he says, now after this, after he got back in Jerusalem, now after this, he built a wall without the city of David. On the west side of Gahan, in the valley, even to the inner end of Fishgate, and compassed about Ophel, and raised it up a very great height, and put captains of war in all the fenced cities of Judah. Get this. He took away all the strange gods, all the idols out of the house of the Lord, and all the altars that he had built in the mount of in the mount of the house of the Lord and in Jerusalem and cast them out of the city. And he repaired the altars of the Lord and sacrificed their own peace offerings and thank offerings yes. and commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. Verse 20. So Manasseh slept with his fathers and they buried him in his own house. And Ammon and his son reigned in his stead. You don't believe I, you, you, let me tell you why I believe that there's two different stories. It's not because there's a wrong in there. God's saying to us today, <coughs> Brother Chuck, you can keep going down the road you're going. If you're lost, you can keep going. And your end is just going to be death and hell. Or you can repent. Yes. And I promise you, I will listen. I will, if you'll really humble yourself and repent, I will draw you back to where I dwell. I will put my name upon you. I'll bless. And you could have a changed ending. Amen. Some of y'all here are probably still lost. Probably you still on your way to hell. You're still trusting. You've never bowed a knee. You've never asked the Lord to save you. You only have to do it one time. Amen. Not a hundred. Right. Not two hundred. One time one with all time. the heart. And say, Lord, yes. forgive me. I deserve hell. Would you please save me? I'm trusting in what your son did on the cross of Calvary. Yeah. Lord, would you please save me? It only takes one time. But then some of y'all here has probably walked away from God. You forgot his touch. You forgot his ways. You forgot his voice. You forgot his blessings. And you've walked away. You're so far out there you can't find your way home. You're like that prodigal son way out there in a far country. Can I tell you this? God's wanting to hear you repent. Yes. God's wanting to hear yes, you yes. pray. God's wanting to see you humble yourself down. Yes. God is wanting to help you. What do you want? Mm. Would you please stand, Miss Fitz? I've been like that prodigal son. I've been out there in a far country. You say, Brother Ten, you just is partying all that? No. I was out there in a far country sitting right on the pew of the church. I was so far out there I couldn't yeah. find me with a flashlight. Sitting on the pew. And I remember God bringing things back to my mind about the Father's house. I remember the day after I was saved. And I finally got up out of my pew, started my way back home. And God met me before I reached the yes. end of the pew. Won't you come back? Won't you try God's way? Won't you come be saved yes. this morning? Won't you call on the Lord and say, Lord, I'm wicked. I don't deserve heaven. I don't deserve the blessings. Lord, would you please save me? Let him save you this morning.
won't you let him restore you? Put you back where you need to be. Anybody? Some people don't. You won't humble yourself. Right. 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 You know why this nation won't get no help and it's going to stay in trouble? There'll still be riots and people doing stupid things around our country. You know why there'll still be diseases? You know why there'll still be hurricanes, earthquakes, famines? wars and rumors of wars. It ain't because God's wanting to do it. It's because America won't bow their knee. You know why families won't get help? You know why kids won't be saved? Because mom and daddies, granny and grandpas, won't humble their self. If my people, which are called by my name, oh, yes, true. Yeah. We ain't talking about America, we're talking about the saved people. If my people, which are called by my name, get this, very first thing, shall humble themselves, pray, and seek my face, <laughs> turn from their wicked ways. Yes. If they'll do this, this is what God said he'll do. Then will I hear from heaven. Yes. And we'll forgive their sins and we'll heal their land. There'll be no healing in our homes until we learn to humble ourselves before God. Say it, Dana. Thank you for being here this morning. Can I tell you, it's not too late. It ain't too late. There needs to be a humbling. There needs to be some praying. There needs to be some seeking God out. The Bible says he will hear from heaven. Yeah. And by the time he gets done, Miss Gloria, he takes our sin, separates us from our sin, <coughs> then casts us as far as east and west. When he looks down, he sees a perfect, righteous, holy, child of God. I'm telling you, if you're lost out there this morning in the world and you've been listening in, 
I don't care how wicked you are. The devil's lied to you. He's told you God don't want you. He's told you God don't want to save you. And by God's word, he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yes. If you'll humble yourself down and say, Lord, save me, he'll save you this morning right where you're at. Won't you try it today? Lord, this morning, we thank you for blessing us. We thank you for the word of God. Lord, I thank you for putting Manasseh's life in the Bible. Lord, it gives all the rest of us hope. No matter how bad we've been, no matter how wicked we are, Lord, you want to save us. Lord, help us uh, to live for you. Help us to get back to the Father's house. Lord, please, anybody out there listening in, uh, Lord, that they might be saved today. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing and done in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray this morning. If you get saved out there in the world today by this message, wherever you're at in the living room, please write us a note, text us back, let us know you got saved. It'll just encourage the church. But uh, we love y'all. See y'all tonight at 6. Thank you for being here.